right, here we're looking at our coupon for some 4G work, which is what we're going to talk about today. This is just the um, the first part we're going to do the route and some fill passes. This is 3 8 inch mild steel, beveled at about 35 degrees with a uh, quarter inch gap in there. I'm going to just use another one of these quarter inch backing plates to make sure I got my gap set right. That's it, and we'll mount her overhead ready to weld it up. Now one of the things that uh, you want to look for is to mount it at the correct height, somewhere where you're comfortable. I like to have my arms just about parallel with the new welding rod so that by the time I'm done I'm not pushing up too far over my head, just pushing a little bit above my eyes. That's about it. Remember ABC, always be comfortable. Okay, we're ready to strike the arc. I'm standing parallel with the axis of the weld. Because you want to be able to see what's going on in the puddle. Very slight weave movement back and forth. Eyes locked in that puddle watching everything that's going on. It's not a lot more difficult than doing it in the flat weld. It can just be a little bit more uncomfortable because you're reaching over your head. Now here's a, somewhat of an arc shot so you can see what's going on. This one's from a couple feet away, so it's not too clear. This is the route, and I'm just tying in them corners, jumping across the middle. You've heard that song before, haven't you? Here, let's go a little bit more close up, and you can get an idea of what's going on. That arc force is just slamming that metal up in there. Make sure you tie your toes in, glide across the middle. Now, I'm not jumping across the middle like you do with the 3G weld. I'm just kind of sliding or gliding across the middle. Kind of hard to see where my toes are there on my uh, weak hand side. So I'm coming a little bit too far over. We're going to have to compensate for that when we do the uh, cover pass. But that'll be in part two of this video. All right, I've got the camera laying down flat on the table looking straight up overhead at the weld. This flash will be gone here in a second. Give you more of an idea of the hand motion towards and away from me, towards and away, as we slowly work our way down the plate. Now, I am wearing full leathers here because uh, you're going to have hot, smoky, melty bits flying all over you, and you don't want to be jumping when they hit you. Alright, here's another close-up arc shot. I know it's kind of hard to see some of these. This is a proved to be rather difficult to film, but you can see the stick there moving across the gap, gliding. And gliding is what I call it. I don't know if that's the technical term for it. But the, uh, the rod is in a 90 degree position to the plate with about a 5 degree pull travel angle to keep pushing that flux back. To the back of the puddle. You want that slag to collect back there and not to catch up with the rest of the molten puddle. Alright, this is it for the fill pass. As you can see, I went a little too far on the toes, so we'll have to compensate for that on the cover pass, which we're going to hit in part two of this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time.